Assalamu alaikum, peace gods, peace to the goddesses, shalom, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you, because you are peace. Universal greetings of peace, hotep, shalom, whatever way you like to say it, family. We don't just give the greetings of peace, we strive to live peacefully. We strive to live in peace with our people here in the wicked wilderness of North America. Peace is a universal greeting which only the righteous abide by willingly. I'm your brother in the struggle for freedom, justice, and equality, Brother Minister Alifa Law, a student follower of Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teachings. And today we're going to cover December Ramadan as taught by Messenger Elijah Muhammad and why in the year 2022, we need to still practice Ramadan as taught directly and respectfully by Messenger Elijah Muhammad. And we're going to share with you some quotes directly from Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teachings because sometimes we just need to get back to basics. Now, I mean, you know, Islam comes after everything has fell. And we tried all the other stuff. Now, I mean, we tried the fancy diets. We tried the extreme diets, the super fast, the... the, the uh, Orthodox stuff, you know what I mean? But nothing works better than a mathematical prescription given by the Supreme Allah God who came in the person of Masfar Muhammad, to all praises are due forever, and his first, last, and only messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So let's get back to basics. I would like to open up with a brief prayer. So give me just a few moments of time to make a brief introduction. I mean, not to hit you in the head with organized religion, but just to mentally and spiritually and scientifically get this three pound brain to tune in to the universal will of the Supreme Allah of God who came with person Masfar Muhammad and his messenger, the Most Elijah Muhammad, so that we're able to attract and repel we're able to attract the good and repel the evil. We're able to reflect and pull in the divine wisdom, the supreme wisdom directly from God, this messenger, and shepherdize it so that, you know, I don't care where you at, who you up against. It could be freestyle, whatever. You could be writing, reading, taking care of the children, doing cleaning, going to work, going to school, and the teachings that just come to you like that throughout the universe. Now, I mean, just sparking neurons. <laughs> Now I mean, until you just light up, now I mean, that, that penal gland, as they say, now I mean, it, it'll just be so clear. I mean, you'd be like, man, I wish our people knew this. I wish our people bore witness and submitted to these teachings. Now I mean, and you know, you'll see people that think they're <laughs> wiser than Messenger Elijah Muhammad, smarter than Messenger Elijah Muhammad, got a better diet than Messenger Elijah Muhammad. And it may be true for that individual circumstance and that individual condition in, in this individual moment in time. But when you're trying to resurrect a nation, you can't give a cookie cutter. You know what I mean, you can't be on a payload diet, be strictly vegan, just dry fast for three days. It's like, for real? You can kill people like that. You can hurt people like that. Some people... I mean, their immune systems can't handle certain things. Some people are on medications. They need to eat certain things. Some people are too thin. Some people are too big. Some people are too small. Some people got real fast uh, digestive tracts. Some people got real slow digestive tracts. Some people are naturally big bones. Some people could eat all the food in the world until they have a heart attack and they don't have an ounce of fat on their bodies. So it's deeper than just the physical. I mean, how to eat to live is mental. How to eat to live is psychological. How to eat to live is economical, political, social, cultural. I mean, there's dimensions to how to eat to live. Okay, so I would like to repeat this prayer. In the most holy name of Allah, God, who came in the person of Master Fard Muhammad, the Supreme Allah, God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, God, 
who came in the Sakin, the person of Master Fard Muhammad. His is the name of Almighty God, Allah, whom we praise. And we bear witness that the honorable, and that name honorable was given to him from Allah himself. Honorable in Arabic is his name. His first name is Kareem. Kareem means honorable. He's Kareem Abdul Muhammad. He's the honorable servant who's worthy of praise, commonly known as the honorable Elijah Muhammad, our first our last and our only messenger. And I bear witness that only the messenger's message can guide us through. Let's begin with a verse from the Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 168. O people, eat the lawful and good things from what is in the earth, and follow not the footsteps of the devil. Surely he is an open enemy to you. He enjoins on you only evil and indecency, and that you speak against a law what you know not. Here we see that the Holy Quran teaches us that there is a law when it comes to food. There is a law that guides us on what we should eat and not eat, according to the Holy Quran. The unity of a law is known as divine unity, or it had the oneness. A lot of people get caught up on the rituals, the languages, the symbols, the signs, I mean, the, the culture, the customs of the people. But the Holy Quran teaches us in chapter 2, or Surah 2, verse or ayat 177, it is not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east and the west, but righteousness is the one who believes in Allah and the last day and the angels and the book and the prophets and gives away wealth out of love for him. To the near of kin and the orphans and the needy and the wayfarer and to those who ask and to set slaves free and keeps up prayer and pays the poor rate and the performance of their promise when they make a promise and the patient in distress and affliction and in the time of conflict. These are they who are truthful and these are they who keep their duty. So here the Holy Quran shows and proves that it's not righteousness if we stand up or bow down. It's not righteousness if we face the East or the West. You know what I mean, it's not righteousness if we speak in Arabic or Aramaic or Hebrew or English or Latin or Kiswahili. It is righteousness that we submit and do the will of our people. It is righteousness that we understand that there is no mystery God that's going to answer our prayers. We have to answer our own prayers. Sometimes we pray for a thing but we're not really willing to go all out for that thing. We're not willing to give all that we have and do all in our power. We're willing to do a little bit. <laughs> we're willing to donate a little something, something. But, you know, you'd be like, a set of the captive believers, black power, march, 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 march. You're like, ah, mm. thousands of y'all, if you really want to set at liberty captive believers, Go down there and get them out. Don't ask them not. Just go down there and set a liberty captive believers. You're not really trying to set liberty captive believers. <laughs> I mean, you really want to get rid of the devil? Get rid of the devil. You're really not trying to get rid of the devil. You really want to do a thing, you'll do it. So you have to understand there are degrees with the law. And we say that which we do not. We say that which is not in our heart. So one of the things with a law is you have to accept the reality of self. Now, I mean, your, your, your strengths and your weaknesses, what you're willing to do and what you're willing not to do. A lot of people talk that talk, but I've seen it. Now, I mean, when it comes to walking that walk, it's a whole different thing. Now, I mean, you know, it's like, it's like you know, they be like, oh, the cracker, this, the white man, this, 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 this. They never smack the white man. They never punch the devil. They ain't 
doing, they ain't doing nothing to no devils. <laughs> They'll talk all day like they is, but they ain't going to do nothing but try their best to get some of them white folks money like the other 10%, rich slave makers of the poor. So the only crime tells us, get out of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? That's not, that's not what the messenger call that blood bath teaching. So we're going to get back the basics around here. You know what I mean? We're going to go back to some things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that a lot of us think that we're so much into this technological age, this informational age that we just know everything. We just know more than Master Fart Muhammad and his message of themselves. We, we so smart on how to live, you can't tell us that God and his messenger is wrong and we're right. <laughs> I mean, and, it, and, it's, and it's comical because if you really understood that these books is from God in person, Master Fart Muhammad by Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, book one, How to Eat the Live, and book two, How to Eat the Live, book two, you're, you're thinking that you can read something in here and internalize it in your little three pound brain and let your thoughts travel 24 billion miles per second and that your neuron generating a power equal to 170,000th of a volt of electricity and your thoughts traveling 24 billion miles per second can be a more dominant thought than the black men 24 scientists that had that thought orbiting the universe and fermenting through the earth from sun to sun for over 66 trillion years. You think you know this universe better than almighty God, Allah himself. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Your whole premise is wrong because every last one of us, everyone and everything has its origin in Allah. With nothing but a thought in the will of a law. Not a spook nor a spirit, but the black man's mind. Not minds with an S. Not all the seven billion brains on earth. Not the seven billion um, brains throughout the, uh, the land masses. But I'm talking about one energy. I'm not talking about we go back to the ancestors. When we die, we're going to transition and go off into the outer space into the cosmos and be flying around meeting up with our great grandma and great grandpa all this spooky unmathematical energy can't travel <laughs> you can, i heard i heard uh a brother yesterday called me he was just busted up having a little fun and he was t and, and you know he was eating some stuff he was telling me like yeah you know what i mean i um i'm taking this jensen so i could get my energy <laughs> i'm like Wait a minute. If the Jensen is in a bottle and it's not in you, how can it be energy? <laughs> Obviously, you don't know the sciences of life. Go study your lessons, brother. I mean, go study your lessons. Go study the sciences of life again. Energy can't be um, transmitted. Energy can't get hot and cold. Energy can't be over there, not over there. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't go back in some energy plasma form. I mean, you're, you're getting photons and rods of light and atoms and cells mixed up with energy. He allows one ahead, the unity of faith. I mean, there is only one alcoholic or one creator of all creation. Now, sunlight are physical rays. You, you can literally take and capture one of them, stop it from traveling, hold it, and it be in your hand. It's a little rod of light. <laughs> I mean, they travel, you know, 186,000 miles per second. But it's a thing. And if something is not doing anything, we may consider it no thing, but it's still something. But when it comes to the mind of man, the messenger teaches us that the mind of man is infinite, capable of accomplishing anything that the brain can conceive, meaning that the brain is limited. The light bulb is limited. My brain does not know what the Harvard students know. My brain don't know what the car mechanic knows. 
My brain doesn't know what the brain um, neurologists know or the heart surgeon or the school teacher that speaks proper English. I mean, my brain knows what it knows. It's unique. It knows some things that you may not know, but your brain knows some stuff I don't know. I might be able to teach you on this a little bit, but you can teach you on other things better than me. We all have different brains like this, all kind of light bulbs. There's 60 watt bulbs. The light bulb in your refrigerator ain't as bright as the light bulb in your lamp, but it's still a light. But the energy, when we're talking about the energy, when we're talking about alcoholic, when we're talking about energy, when we're talking about the mind, when, we, when we're talking about the creator, as they say, now, I mean, we're talking about something totally different. We're not talking about electricity. Electricity is not energy. I mean, some scientists may define it as a form of energy. But when we talk about energy, we're talking about that infinity. We're talking about the black man's mind. That's our cosmology. That's our lexicon. That's how we define it in the nation of Islam, the mind. Scientists call it energy. Religious people call it the creator. Some people say it's not an it, it's a he, it's a she, it's a who, it's a, it's a, a it, a that, it's they. Whatever nomenclature or scientific names you want to put on it, we basically say the mind, the mind of the black man. That's what we're talking about. When you hear us talking about the black man is God, not me, we're talking about that just because that mind is manifested in our flesh, we like the mind, a law, and Sakin, the person. A law in the person of Master Muhammad is the supreme law, the God of gods, but the law is manifested through you. Not just the males, but also the females. You'd be like, well, who came first, the black or the brown? The black. Who came first, the brown or the yellow? The brown. Who came first, the yellow or the red? The yellow. Who came first, the red or the albino? The red. Who came first, the albino or the white? The white. Who came first, the white or the clear? The clear was not born. It died. The lowest you could go is the white. Four shades of black, four shades of brown, four shades of yellow, four shades of red, four shades of white. The teachings of the Ayyubalaj Muhammad cover the sciences of life. Don't let these pseudoscientists, these wizards, these warlocks, these witches trick you into thinking that the teachings of the Ayyubalaj Muhammad don't have merit. Don't let them trick you into believing that Masfar Muhammad is not the supreme law and that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is not his first, last, and only messenger. Don't let them teach you out of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Okay? So, let us look at what the messenger says. The messenger says, in chapter 15, How Need to Live, this is book number two, page number 55. Okay. This month, I prescribe for you to fast the 12th month as the Christian year for the purpose of getting you away from the false teaching of the Jesus' birth on the 25th of December. God has taught me that he was born between the first and the second week of September and not December. So here in the nation of Islam, we don't believe that Jesus was born on the 25th of December, that he's put on the cross and all that kind of stuff like that there. We live at the historical Jesus, you know what I mean, you know, it, it, he, he got stabbed in his heart, and I mean, and it's a totally different science there, totally different historicity, contrary to their story, all right? He goes on to say, this day, the 25th December, he taught me was the birth date of that demon Nimrod, who was born in the 17th century of Moses' era before the birth of Jesus. He was so wicked that the scholars and scientists of scriptures or the prophets do not like to teach you of the history of Nimrod. So here Nimrod comes in. Now, I mean, you, you have three primary civilized. I'm going to simplify it. Now, I mean, when the devils is uh, exiled into the caves and hillsides of Europe, now, I mean, to the Caucasus Mountains, Abraham, or Abraham, the exalted father, I mean, a black man, is the, is the first one to go civilize. He's teaching these white folks that we today call themselves Jews. He's teaching them Freedom, justice, and equality. He's civilizing them, teaching them Islam. The Holy Quran teaches we invited them to Islam. The Quran teaches that, that when you, the Quran says that um, uh, in the chapter in the Quran on the cave, that when you come to the cave and you look in, you be like, oh, the smell of them. The, it's like, oh my goodness, what's going on? You know what I mean? 
And basically, you know, these people that listen, they began to become civilized. But every 2,000 years, a major prophet is born. So 4,000 years ago, we sent the prophet Musa, Moses, to go civilize the devils in the caves and hillsides of Europe, according to our lessons. Now, when Moses came in and did his work, he was the primary civilizer. Now, I mean, they gave him a lot of trouble. I mean, but an uh, evil black man known as Nimrod in, in, in the scriptures, in the book of Genesis, now, I mean, the builder of the Tower of Babel, the skyscraper, the first skyscraper, now, I mean, and hereafter, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that we will not build a building over seven stories high, seven symbolizing God, now, I mean, but Nimrod, he basically raised up some gangsters. He raised these little demons up to be gangsters. That that like so so you basically got three classes of European colonizers. You got the religious ones that's like Quakers come to Pennsylvania. They're not coming here to uh, kill and all that kind of stuff. They're trying to escape religious persecution. They just want to worship God. You got. Orthodox Jews that's like, we just want to believe, study the Torah and live according to Moses' law and obey Yahweh or Jehovah and live in peace. You know what I mean? Then you had a masses. You know what I mean? You know, what we call Americans or Europeans, French, Germans, Italians, Portuguese, whatever. There's so many countless titles we can um, put on them. You know what I mean? But then you had this rebellious class that's just, you just got this minority set that's just more diabolical than the rest. So you got the intellectual Europeans. Then you have the masses. They just, you know what I mean, capitalists, basically. They, they, they just trying to get heaven on earth. They just, you know what I mean, it ain't even personal with them. They like any creature. But then you had these rebels. You got these Vikings. You got these pirates. You got these motorcycle riders. I mean, you you got, you got these these colonizers. You know what I mean? You know, you, these barbarians. And that thing is like rape, rob, and murder. You know what I mean? Like, we ain't trying to come study nothing. We ain't trying to learn no Egyptian sciences. We ain't trying to enslave y'all. None of that. We coming on the, we saw, we conquer. Anything we see, we want to take it. You know what I mean? They just on some gangster stuff. All right. So these is Nimrod followers. This is Nimrod's teaching. Now, I mean, Nim Nimrod is the one that came in and tried to interrupt Moses's work, if you will. The messenger said he was so wicked. This is a black man. Nimrod was black, not white. See, it wasn't a white man teaching the world evil and devilishment. It was the black man, Dr. Yakub, that taught them devilishment. It was N the black man, Nimrod, that taught them devilishment. OK. He was so wicked that the scholars and scientists of scriptures of the prophets do not like to teach you of this history of Nimrod. And if it was the birthday of the righteous prophet Jesus, you most certainly in your celebration of the 25th of December have not been shown a clean and holy celebration of a righteous person with your drunkenness and your gambling. Your everything but right is committed on the 25th day of December in celebrating the birth of a righteous man. But you are not doing so for righteousness. You are celebrating the birth date of an evil person. And the white Christians will send you all the whiskey and beer and wine and swan that you want to eat and drink on that day. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Arab year, which is also 12 months and not nine months. The Holy Quran teaches that 12 months have always been a year with God. You study ancient Kemet or Egypt, they had 12 months. They calculated 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds in a solar year. All right? 24 hours is a day that the Caucasians say. They're now trying to get rid of spring forward and fall back. They trying to, they, their calendar is so wrong because it's based on Eurocentric mathematics. You know what I mean? The, the Julian calendar. You know what I mean? The Justinian calendar. They're, they're, they're using a formula that breaks the earth up into time zones where they're trying to play catch up. So they got problems like the, the, like that, the Muslim calendar. They're using the moon. That's not an accurate calendar using the moon. You know what I mean? So you got like change it every 400 years. You got, you know, white folks kind of like every four, you got leap years, you got daylight savings time, set your clocks back, set your clocks for, because they don't know the time. 
that time is not right. The message teaches us that time is created by motion. We live on the planet rotating 1,037 and one-third miles per hour on her axis. 24,896 miles in circumference. If you do the mathematics of division, you'll get 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 46 seconds, or a 24-hour day. So our planet is not really a 24-hour day, but it's near that. 23 hours, 56 minutes, 46 seconds in a solar day. It orbits around the sun every 365 days, five hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds. So it's a little longer than 365 days. And this is why they, they get this thing all wrong because their mathematics is wrong. But the message teaches us in the Holy Quran bears witness that 12 has always been the calendar of a law. We always had 12 major scientists and 12 minor scientists. 12 has always been a foundation. The very ruler that you use, the 12 foot, was invented because the Pharaoh had a 12, size 12 foot. His foot, the God's foot was 12 inches. And they incorporated that into their mathematics. And that's how you came up with the foot. And you multiplied by three to get the yard or the arm. Now, I mean, so all of the mathematics, which is Islam, Islam is mathematics, came from the original people who is Allah, the supreme being, a black man of Asia. The messenger goes on to teach us about this Ramadan. Ramadan, the Holy Quran teaches, this is page 56. Ramadan, the Holy Quran teaches us, is the month that the Holy Quran was revealed to Muhammad. And they worshiped the month by abstaining from eating and drinking during the daytime from sun up to sundown or before the sun rises until after she sets in the western skies. Then after dark, we can eat and drink until the sun rises again the next day. The significance of this Arabic fasting in Ramadan is that the spiritual darkness of Yaku's made man, meaning the white race, eating and drinking, sport and play was the order of the white world until the daybreak of truth coming in the first of the 7,000 year after the 6,000 years of spiritual darkness and evil of the white man's world. We are living now in the bright spiritual world of Allah the great Mahdi, in the person of Master Fard Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. Therefore, we are not, therefore, we are not the children of darkness, but the children of light and truth. Actually, divinely, there is no fast set for the children of the light of God and that fasting ceases, but, but qualified, but until we have accomplished our work of perfection of self and separation of us from the spiritual darkness of Yaku's made man and teachings, we fast to get out of it and take a month that we used to worship as being the month in which the birth of Jesus came about. Let us take and look at another quote from Messenger Elijah Muhammad on how to eat to live. Now, it is not a sin to eat meat during the month of Ramadan. As a minister, I definitely recommend that you eat a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle if you can. Now, some of you may be in circumstance, like say some brothers and sisters may be incarcerated. They might be in a hole. They, they don't go to work and earn an income. They don't go shopping and buy that food. They can't take that phone and order <laughs> uh Uber Eats. I mean, they, they can't go to Whole Foods and buy um, some vegan salad. They can't go buy, they can't grow some fresh fruit. They in this jail cell. The devil brings them that food. You know what I mean? They can eat or die. <laughs> they can drink or die. You know what I mean? You know, they're in dire streets. So, that neon. Our lessons teaches us in 17 Ways for the Islamic Culture by Message Elijah Muhammad. Actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong, but motives bring rewards. Okay? So the messenger says, do not be a meat consumer.
be a vegetarian. This is the best menu for our health. So if it's practical, you should try to eat a vegan lifestyle. You should try to live a vegan lifestyle. You should try to eat um, fruits and vegetables, stone ground, um, wheat toast. And I mean, you know, you should try to drink some water. You should wean yourself off of red meat to like chicken and fish. Now, I mean, during Ramadan, the messenger teaches us during this month, now, I mean, you don't want to eat no land meats. Now, I mean, like, you know, it's not a sin if you want to eat some fish. It's not a sin if you're incarcerated and you ask the administration, can y'all have Ramadan? And they granted you Ramadan. And, you know, they like you in prison. They don't eat to live. They got processed food. They got canned goods, boxes and bags and frozen products. And I mean, they like, y'all could um, eat this. We got beef stew tonight. <laughs> I mean, we got um, some, some, um, some baked fish and macaroni and cheese and some canned stewed tomatoes and some wheat bread tonight. You know what I mean? So you got to make do. The message said when he was in prison, he had it real hard. He said, you know, he had um, got with the warden and told the warden, listen, me and my fathers, we ain't got nothing to eat. All we eat is, is bread. We trying to avoid eating pork. Everything you got, you put lard in it. He said the warden laughed at him. And so, you know, the bread got pork in it, too. So the message FOI was in there eating pork bread. The message that I'm eating swine bread unknowingly. There's no sin on that part. So he said, well, we had to start. We had to start. He said, sometimes we have to make a meal out of potato pillars. Now, I mean, just to get some protein. And, you know, what I mean, like men need carbs. We we, we exercise. And I mean, our metabolism is high. You be hungry. You be skinny in the morning. You start getting sick. You start getting pale. Now, I mean, your, 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 your aura, your glow will go away because of the stress and pressure of fighting these devils day in and day out. Now, I mean, so the messenger understood that actions are judged by intentions. Actions may appear wrong, but motives bring rewards. So judge not, least ye be judged. Now, I mean, so we don't judge a brother if he want to eat certain things during ramen. Now, some brothers be hungry. They went all day without eating or drinking anything. Now, I mean, so, so you know, as a minister, I used to see brothers, they had that little tang. I don't be like, brother, you know the chemicals in that tang? This, this. I'm like, go ahead, drink your tang. You got some ice? <laughs> I mean, brothers, you know, some brothers be like, um... They 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 happy they got some um fried chicken, some baked chicken. I mean, they they got some B12. Because ain't no B12 in your fruits and vegetables. So the message teaches we do believe in eating a balanced meal. You can't live with you can't your 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 temple, your body, your brain, your your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your heart, your lungs, your kidneys. It's not gonna operate properly without a balanced myat diet. Okay, so so you know, we're in a struggle. So Masfar Muhammad wasn't no pseudo-scientist. His thing, he was a practical man. He like, all right, poor folks, y'all could grow beans. Y'all could go buy a bag of beans. Y'all could go pick some fresh beans. Whatever, you know I mean, you know, some things in some ways are better than others. But, you know what I mean, you know, you try your best. That's all law acts is that you strive. He don't desire hardship. He desires ease. You see? So let us let us look at something the message teaches us in this um, how to live. The messenger of Allah himself, he says on page 116 of how to live. By nature, the human body was not made to digest meats. Meat causes a great shortening of our lives. We all eat meat. I eat meat also, but it certainly is not good for us. I do not, however, eat pig. So the message thing is like, by nature, we're vegetarians. But in America, you know what I mean? You, you, you live in a deep circumstance. You know what I mean? You, you can't get spooky with it. A person that raised a cow or raised some fish and ate some halal meat is doing better for that body than someone that went to the supermarket and bought uh, some kale and some tomatoes that was made from genetically engineered seeds and grown in an environment where they sprayed pesticides all on top of the vegetables and they put uh, miracle grow chemicals into the fruits to make the strawberries this big and the cantaloupe this big and to make a seedless orange and you got all this fruit and 
vegetables, and it's all poison. All of it. Every element of it is cancerous death. And you think, oh, I'm vegan. I'm eating fruits and vegetables. So what? You got to think outside the devil's box. You have to be like, oh, okay. Today, I'm eating nothing but vegan. Tomorrow, I'm eating nothing but vegan. Oh, uh, today, I'm going to eat this fish. I'm going to take this bread and eat me a little um, veggie sandwich. I put some cheese, some lettuce, tomatoes. I got some red onions. I got some raw onions on there. And I toast the bread. You know what I mean? I ate, I ate, me, um, I ate me two um, cheese sandwiches. And I ate a bag of chips. <laughs> I mean, cooked in um, um, peanut oil. You <laughs> know what I mean? It's not healthy, but it's healthy. When you look at a person that uses how to eat to live, you're going to see with your own eyes. They look healthier than a mother. You'll be like, what? I bench press out this way. I, I, could, I could punch a grown man and not knock him out. I could punch a grown man and physically take his life with one punch. I could punch a grown man and crush his ribs and it'll puncture his heart and kill him. One punch. Word is bond. <laughs> I mean, meaning that how to eat to live has to be adapted to your individual lifestyle. If you're a female, if you're 20, if you're 83, if you're four, if you're a athletic male, if all you do is type on, on a typewriter, type on a computer, doing computer program, if you're a construction worker using jackhammers for eight hours a day, if you painting and climbing up on roofs, nailing <laughs> shingles on the roof, you, you need different diets. If you if you playing football, you can't eat no one meal a day and those lettuce and tomatoes <laughs> and burn that stuff off and think you're going to sprint and you're a wide receiver, they going to be like, yo, why you stop running? And I got tired of them all. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't have enough carbs in me. I, they like, yo, man, what you eating? Oh, I'm eating to live. I This morning, you know what I mean? I'm on a three-day drive fast. All I did was um ate some air. I was, oh, ate um about three cubic feet of pure air. I'm on an air fast. Hey, like, man, we can't win like that. In life, you can't win like that. You have to use balance. You have to use common sense. So how do you to live is not a cookie cutter. Now, I mean, the message it teaches us in our lessons, use good judgment. Muslim uses good judgment discretion in, in all things. Use good judgment discretion at all times. We use good judgment and discretion. You have to say, okay, under these circumstances, what do I need to do right now? Now, maybe like, oh, man, it's the flu season, this, that, and the other. Um, it's cold outside. Um, I went outside and, you know what I mean, we got a giant driveway. I had to shovel all the snow, you know what I mean? I was like soaking sweat, you know what I mean? Whew, that was hard work, you know what I mean? And it's like, all right, I, I got to replenish myself. Let me let me make a smoothie. Not that juices is good for the body, but it's like, hey, this, this is a quick little energy. I just threw some, some fruits and vegetables in there. Now my blood kind of thin. I need I need some, some blood thickener. Okay, you need some kale. <laughs> But kale, vitamin K, can kill you. You get kale poisoning. I mean, you know, so so you want to look at this, the, the, the old adage that food is medicine and medicine is food. And people just like try to make it like everybody should be eating the exact same thing. Oh, you, you're not a vegan? You know what I mean? Hey, like, man, I was eating pork for, for 52 years before I got conscious. I, 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 I was obese. I mean, I, I couldn't go to uh, one meal a day. I was used to eating five, six times a day. You know what I mean? So what works for them? If you're eating five meals a day, drop down to four. If you're eating pork, get you some turkey. If you're eating pork bacon, get you some turkey bacon. Allah will bless you. You will see your body, your atoms, your atomic structure will begin to heal and repair themselves. Your physical heart. Your physical brain, your eyes, your, your teeth, your gums, the, the blood in your body, you'll just see your health coming back to you by following what Almighty God of law and the person of Masfar Muhammad, to more praise will do forever, has revealed to his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is part one of three. Don't miss part two. As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu Peace, family. The struggle continues.